So our journey through the pathfinding algorithms is almost at an end and you might even say we've reached our destination. Now you can be pretty proud of yourself if you've made it this far. Uh, you've done the hard part so if you manage to implement the Dijkstra algorithm pretty strong. Uh, however the A star algorithm isn't much to do now so it's like five lines of code or even less. All right, so let us take a look at the journey we took. Now I'm referring here to content from redblob.games.com. Uh, I've linked it in the description below if you want to take a look at it and dive deeper into the topic. However, uh, we first looked at the breadth first search algorithm and I think this depiction of the algorithm is quite accurate. It expands in all directions equally. Then we took a look at the Dijkstra algorithm this algorithm already takes into account the cost uh, it would take to reach a tile. So uh, the algorithm kind of expands around forests, for example, and, and forests have a higher cost, so they will be calculated later. So it's kind of weighted, kind of, yeah. And then lastly, the A star algorithm is uh, the Dijkstra algorithm, but additionally, it will try to move towards a direction. So if I have my whole map and I'm at the center and I want to move to the top right one, Dijkstra algorithm will still calculate the whole map and expand into the whole map. However, the A star algorithm will just try to move uh, in the direction of the, of the goal. So that's the main difference. And the way we implemented Dijkstra it's really easy to add this addition. Now to drive this point home, let's have a look at the following example. Now, uh, this is using the Dijkstra algorithm. And as you can see, uh, it almost looks at all the tiles on the whole map. So let's change this to the A star algorithm. And this gets far, far better because it only looks at like a third or a fourth of the tiles. So this will be far more efficient. And the way we implement this is that we add a so-called heuristic, which tells the algorithm in which direction it should expand. Now, many of you guys probably will ask yourselves what the hell a heuristic is. Uh, and it's not that complicated. It's just a fancy word for a rule of thumb. So an example would be, uh, if I go by car, I'm usually faster than if I go by bike or by foot. That's just a heuristic. Probably it will be that way, but there might be a traffic jam and that way I would be slowed down substantially when going by car. So then the heuristic would be false. So it's just an approximation or a rule of thumb of how things work. So what we're going to use as a heuristic is the distance between the current tile that the algorithm is calculating and the destination where we want to go. So uh, because we're expanding from the end to the start, we will, for example, if we're currently looking at this tile, we'll take the distance um, to the start into account. And we will add this to the cost. And that way our algorithm expands uh, or tries to expand into the direction that the starting position is. Now calculating the distance between two tiles is actually rather simple. Uh, we will use the Manhattan distance in this example. And the Manhattan distance just is the amount of blocks between two tiles. So uh, it doesn't take into account if there are any walls or something. It just uh, looks at the amount of tiles you will need to go. So in this case, I would need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks and that's the Manhattan distance. This term comes from actually New York, Manhattan. So this here is the Google Maps view of Manhattan and you can see here it's arranged in these blocks. And if you talk to somebody who lives in Manhattan, he usually doesn't tell you that it's seven kilometers to here, but he would tell you you have to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks to get there. That's the Manhattan distance. 
And that's the same way we can think of here. And this is a rather decent heuristic. It's by no means perfect, but it works rather well. And that way, um, if, we, uh, if we are closer or if we currently inspect tiles that are closer, we give them a higher priority compared to tiles that would be farther away like here. So uh, that's actually pretty easy to implement. We just use the X coordinates from tile one and subtract them by the X coordinates from tile two. And then we take the absolute value of this calculation, which means if the result of this calculation is negative, we just transform it to a positive value. Um, and then we add the same thing for the Y coordinates and yeah, that way we just have the movement points you need to reach the tile if there were no walls. Now the rest will be rather simple. Let me just uh, get up here. You can see my A star algorithm is currently empty and I just take everything inside of my Dijkstra algorithm and copy paste it to my A star. And we will just change one tiny teeny bit and it will already work. So you remember when I told you we will still create this priority variable because we need it for the A star algorithm. This is what we're going to do now. So the priority will be the cost plus the distance between the neighbor and the starting time because we are calculating from the goal to the start as you can remember. That's everything we need uh, to implement the A star algorithms. So let's get back to Unity and check if this actually works. Let me just draw you a few walls here. And now I will do it like this. And it seems to work. Now let's compare it with the Dijkstra algorithm. And yeah, the Dijkstra will calculate far, far more because it's not necessarily directional and the A star will calculate far less tiles. All right, so now let's make a unit move along this path. And as you can see, it just works like a charm. So yeah, that's it. Now let me just show you the code for a second. So you, if you want to implement it, you can do this. So this is the code that moves the character. You can of course pause the video or just look at the code that I put in the GitHub repository in the description below. Now, if you want to dive deeper into the rabbit hole, uh, you can take a look at the A-Star Pathfinding project from aarongranberg.com, link in the description. And he has a fully fleshed out implementation of the A-Star Pathfinding, um, which you can use for your project. And he also implemented stuff like multi-threaded uh, path generation and stuff like that. So it's uh, a really neat plugin to use for Unity. So I hope you enjoyed the journey we took together from the Floodfill algorithm over the Dijkstra to the A-Star algorithm. And I really hope you learned something and you got a better feeling about how you can actually implement pathfinding in your own projects. Mm -hmm.